Though most of people see Rapier as a weapon which was used solely for thrusting, that is not entirely true. The Renaissance Rapier was a cut and thrust weapon and most of the Rapier Masters describe both kinds of attack. The thrust, of course, should be our primary means of engaging our opponent, but in some situations a cut becomes more natural and even more effective. In this video I'll show you some basic exercises which I do in my solo practice and will give you some practical tips on cutting in general. Like in Kunst des Fechtens with the longsword, Rapier Masters recognize multiple types of cuts. To make it easy for you, we will divide them just in two important categories. The cuts from the right side and the cuts from the left side, or mandrito and reverso. The shoulder cut. A cut can be delivered from the shoulder, from the elbow or from the wrist. Salvador Fabrice talks about the fourth bonus way, which is a variation of the shoulder cut. Instead of drawing the sword all the way, you just keep your arm extended and stiffened. The shoulder cut generates the biggest amount of power and has the most threatening looks. The problem is, it takes both a lot of time to land from the initial movement and a lot of time to recover, which simply gives a tempo to our opponent to strike. That's why, if you'd like to use it, you should practice it swiftly, trying not to overuse energy and learn how to quickly return to a guard. Alternatively, striking crossways will certainly help you to improve your flow. The Fabrice fourth wave of cutting is plus minus a less energy consuming version of the shoulder cut. What you need to do is to raise your arm with the sword high above your head and then strike down with the wrist stiffened and sword extended to your opponent. To people practicing German longsword, it is as if you were striking from Fontag to Langort. Simple enough. Interesting side note. Fabrice mentions that if the cut is done vertically downward, the sword may hit the ground which may cause its breaking. Rapier is not a light weapon. Some specimen weigh up to 1.5 kilograms and as you can see, if you generate a lot of power, sometimes it's hard to stop. In this last exercise you can see me doing funny jumping. Actually it is a very good basis for more advanced actions where you will utilize either the height advantage or use dynamic weight shifts to acquire more strength or reach in your attack. The elbow cut. The elbow cut is, besides the Fabri's so-called stiffened arm, maybe the most used way of cutting. With the elbow you can throw a cut fast enough with a considerable force. The sword's arc is not as wide as with the shoulder cut and the arm does not create a very large opening. You should practice striking the elbow cut crosswise and also to the lower openings. Nicoletto Giganti in his second book says that you should be well trained in performing cross striking to quote you must exercise by delivering the mandriti and the reversi to condition your arm and quicken your legs. Train this by executing two or three hundred cuts to both sides without stopping. After your arm will be well trained to cut to the different openings, add a lunge to your exercise. Besides the conservative lunge, you should also practice a leaping lunge, which will give you a very long reach. All you need to do is to kick your leg forward and land in a deep stance. I will talk about this kind of lunging more in a separate video. The wrist cut. Finally, the last way of cutting is delivering the cut from the wrist. Fabrice states that this way is far better than either of the previous two. Even though the sword makes an arc, the arm remains motionless and extended towards your opponent. Dizzy cheese that your body will be still covered by your arm and it will be harder for your opponent to parry your blow thanks to the speed of this way of cutting. Since in this cut the whole power is generated just by the circular motion of your wrist, it's actually very easy to change the blow into a parry if the need arises. Also, the wrist cut may be used to parry another cut and you can then shoot your point forward to either hit with a thrust or make your opponent parry it and make another cut to his legs, etc. Again, 
don't forget to practice the wrist cut with deep lunges or the firm-footed attacks as our ancestors used to call it. And now when we've learned the three ways of cutting, let's do some giganti. In rapier fencing, there are as many cuts as there are in other schools of fencing. So don't worry, just open your imagination and try all the different combinations you can think of or find in the different fencing books. So thanks for watching my video. In the next part we will explore some footwork exercises and also some specifics of Salvador Fabri's school of Italian rapier. <laughs>